right, so guys, we're here uh, live for a Vectors virtual field trip at the Museum of Flight. I'm EJ, and I mean, sure, probably you guys know me. I'm here with Scott Manley. Scott Manley. <laughs> Hello, how are you? And then we have Ted. Here, Hi. Here at the Museum of Flight. And then, of course, documenting this whole thing is camera reception. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we're actually we got a pretty awesome piece of tech behind us here. We have the space shuttle trainer. So this trainer is a inside of it. It's a full. It's working. Is it, is it not? Like, well, it was working at one point. Like, what, what do they use it for? This was used for training. Well, this was used to um, more or less get the shuttle crews used to living and working inside of the space shuttle environment. So it's it's not like a flight simulator, yeah. but it has all the bells and whistles, all the knobs, everything that they need to know uh, by heart before they go up into space. That's awesome. All the lockers and, and things they would need to store stuff in. Yeah, because where the toilet is. You obviously. know, when you think about it, there's almost no time for them to get into a real orbiter before a flight yeah. because they are either in space or getting ready for the next flight yep, yep. in some hangar a thousand miles away. So this was at Johnson Space Center, always there, always ready. And they would spend maybe 100 to 200 hours inside of this thing before they went into orbit. God. So this thing we're talking about is just the crew cabin, or is there more beyond this? The, air, the airlock? Uh, yeah, we won't be able to go inside the airlock. We can see it. You can see it, and then that opens to the cargo bay, which is open to the public all the time. That's a big, big space. The cargo bay was added by the museum for sure. No, no, okay. So no, this was whole yeah, oh, right. yeah. That's why NASA, in its uh, usual way, called it the FFT, the full fuselage trainer, uh, to differentiate it from the ones that didn't have the full fuselage. There were two others of those that were just the nose section. So there's a quick question here. I mean, we're here, we're at the yeah. Museum of Flight, which we always appreciate the museum letting us come and do this sort of stuff, Ted. Especially in the morning, the museum's not open yet, right? Yeah. So we are here, and the reason we're here before the museum is open... We're, uh, we get to go in. We're gonna... We're gonna go inside. We're gonna go up there. <laughs> so, Chet, this is something we have not tested yet inside. Whoops, here. Uh, yeah, thank you. Can you hold that? Thank you. So we are going to, we have not been inside of it. What is it made out of? Is it metal? Is it wood? Plaster? It is mostly plywood. Mostly plywood. Nice. So we are going to go inside this for the uh, first time and see how this goes. Thank you, Scott. All right. Oh. And again, we do have Twitch chat here. Um, we will be answering questions as we go. But uh, look at this. <laughs> the the, the hatch is like closed and everything. If you just put that down, man, that, like, you don't have to carry that around. All right. Oh, and we have another guest with us. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll get over in the corner here like this. And there's apparently keys to the kingdom that Ted has here. <laughs> it's, no, it wasn't. It was, Wait, it no. was totally locked and there's a combination. Yeah. Security must have Yeah. So we'll remove the plexiglass uh, thing here, and we're going to be going inside of the, this is an actual piece of training equipment. Yep. Yes. Just, look, someone's joined us. Yeah. yeah. And we have another special guest with us right now. How's it going, Jeff? Doing well. Doing How are you well. doing this morning? Doing all right. We are all going to fit in here, huh? Yeah. So normally tour groups, uh, we, we model tour groups around a uh, uh, shuttle crew, so it's typically I think six uh, yeah. six yeah. visitors with a, a tour guide acting as kind of the the commander. So nice. Yeah. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, hey, we're short one. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. And it is sort of cramped in there. And again, yeah, we have bodies. not. Oh wait. Yes. Um, no. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you are stepping inside uh, an historic artifact. Right. So everyone does need to get booted up. Um, <laughs> Because uh, our our goal is to allow folks who come through here a hundred years from now you, sir. Uh, to have access, but also be able to experience the shuttle trainer right. as close to how it is now. And uh, inside there is a lot of uh, uh, NASA hardware that is not necessarily being made anymore. Yep, so yep. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to source new parts for it. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll get some action shots of the guys getting on their booties here. <laughs> well, maybe in 
in the same way that we've got these old guys that used to work on, you know, B-17s and B-47s uh, help us restore those planes. We'll have, you know, former shuttle crew members that will help us restore this. Yeah. <laughs> there, have, there have been some, we have had some conversations and we have some meetings. I can't really go into a whole lot of details. Yeah. But, uh, but there, there is discussion about helping us uh, uh, spruce up uh, inside at some point once yeah. we get the get it on the schedule. Nice. All right, so a uh, quick safety briefing. Uh, as you go in, the interior is, as Ted mentioned, this was used by every shuttle astronaut, so the interior is designed like a spacecraft optimized for a zero-G environment. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of trip hazards and uh, head conkers. So uh, be sure to be very aware of your surroundings. Uh, it is, uh, and it, it, you are stepping into a, a an artifact with 30 plus years of NASA history. Yep. Uh, so we do ask that you do not touch uh, anything as we, we go inside there. In the floor. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can touch the floor. <laughs> touch the, the floor. There, there, there are handholds and things that <laughs> you will be uh, specifically You'll directed. Your <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, oh. and, uh, um, yeah. So, all right. Cool. And I'll show you the easiest way to, to uh, head in uh, is. Have a seat here on the hatch. Stick your feet through and then just, just slide, slide in. in. There is the All right. emergency escape slide uh, is right down here, so try not to kick that too hard. Uh, there is a, a yellow colored handle that you can grab onto up above the doorway to help pull yourself in. Cool. So. Right. Is that red light on? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so chat, one more time. Uh, we have not been inside of this before, so if we drop signal or something, that's expected, but we are recording locally. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing going. <laughs> to the what space shuttle problem. trader. Looks like he's meant to do that. Go ahead. I'll be last. All right, Scott. And uh, here we go. EJ lives here now. Nice. EJ lives here now. I'm good, dude. Velcro I'm good. Thing, the, the trainer actually came with giant binders of Velcro maps. So we've got like four, like Scoot two or three inch here, binders Scoot that are just up close photos of where all of the Velcro is supposed to be placed uh, inside <laughs> inside the trainer. <laughs> is that all the, all the blue pieces are like special space shuttle Velcro? So it's all color coded. Yeah? The blue is all... Uh, the standard, uh, every mission stayed the same Velcro for uh, affixing whatever. And then you'll see some yellow pieces. Those were astronaut special request Velcro. So if someone wants their shaving mirror stuck onto, onto a locker, that's where that would go. And then there is white Velcro in a couple of places. And that would be like customer Velcro. So for okay. whatever the mission was, if, the, the, if they're deploying a satellite, if the the company that would be operating the satellite or things like that uh, wanted to have a camera mounted somewhere in order to monitor things, or if they're running a mid-deck experiment and they want to ha have something set up to monitor, they'd put down a piece of white Velcro. So that way, when they're resetting the shuttle after a mission, they know, okay, you know, pop off all the yellow Velcro, pop off the white uh, Velcro, and then reset for the, the next mission. So we're not in a specific mission configuration here. Um, when the shuttle trainer came up to us, it was actually shipped in pieces in aboard the Super Guppy, uh, and they had actually taken a lot of the interior components out of the trainer. So actually, one of my early tasks in the the shuttle gallery was figuring out how to put all this stuff back <laughs> in. <laughs> it was never made yeah. to be taken apart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the the lockers and things are in just sort of a general uh, spec. Uh, configuration, but not match to any particular mission. Though that is one of our goals down the line. We really want to try to get as close as possible to perhaps uh, STS-135 or another um, sort of mission that is known configuration. This, this vehicle. Yeah, so. Gotcha. So everything in here right now is this all storage? Like where are we? So we're in the mid deck. Uh, this is basically the uh, the living quarters for a shuttle crew. Uh, on their mission. So if you can imagine spending two weeks with six other individuals and no shower, that's the life of a shuttle astronaut. And compared to earlier missions, it was down, <laughs> downright luxurious. I think Skylab had 
probably the one of the sweeter deals in yeah. terms of living <laughs> space. Um, but uh, At least they had a toilet, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. A yeah, and, and a shower. Yeah, and a shower. And a shower. Yeah. So, so this uh, this is the mid deck. This is where most of the the eating, sleeping, uh, a lot of the the indoor experiments would exercising all that kind of day to day life stuff would would take place here. So there there would there would be three astronauts in here during launch and landing. Uh, you can see the hold downs from where the the seats would be. So there'd be one seat here, one there, and then uh, one right is one it, right there. Is it these yeah, guys? That, that's that's those little uh, yeah circles. Yeah. Uh, we, we pop the bolts out so that to try to reduce some of the the trip hazards while folks come through. Because if you come to the museum, you can actually take a, a, a tour a tour like yeah. this with uh, yeah. with our visitor services staff. That's like a scheduled thing though. Yeah, like you pay you pay to yeah. come and you have a specific yeah. time slot and that yeah. sort of thing. So you sign up for it. Where did the fourth seat go for the one case they had eight people on? So um, I believe that is a... I, is it even in this version? Yeah, I, that is an excellent question. Um, and I'm sure, because they would have trained for that mission on here. So I I don't know, don't the, know? Don't know the answer for the, 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 official, uh, the official configuration. We've got a, you know, there, there are a couple other bolt access points. But, and and yeah. then the other thing to consider is that... Um, with the air lockdown, I know they also had uh, rescue configurations where they could actually l l have folks laid out like on mm. on stretcher style. Oh wow! And that I believe used some of the air the the airlock area, so it's possible that 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 fourth seat um, is is the the hold downs are, are somewhere under there. Yeah. Uh, so yes, a lot of this is is dedicated to storage. We've got the forward locker bay, we've got aft lockers, um, and and those would hold everything from clothes to food to you know scientific experiments Tools. and the like. Right. Snacks. Kit. Snacks. Yeah. The pantry. So the pantry oh, hey. there. So. Yeah. Kernel oh, appropriate. That was the snack container. That was <laughs> yeah. not scheduled food. That was the the uh, the extra uh, reserve <laughs> and like as wanted uh, uh, snack items. <laughs> so. Literally the snack containers. Yep, yep. Um, and then <sighs> we've, we've got a couple of uh, sleeping bags rigged up over here on the wall. Yep. Just representative generally, um, unless they had something that needed 24-hour monitoring, crews would would act on the same shift. So they'd all they'd all sleep together and they just roll out additional sleeping bags, stick them up wherever. Right. And and you know, some would stick them to the walls, ceilings. Uh, some astronauts like to, to float up and, and sleep on the mid deck so they could look out the at the window. Huh. Um, so So all right, I, I, I got some things like in guys, I don't have to be the only one talking. This thing up here looks like an old fashioned speaking tube. What they're like helm to one oh eight and that like <laughs> So uh, so this yeah, so this is the uh, the part of the air circulation air system ah. in there because with with no natural convection in microgravity, you needed to have constant circulation of the air, otherwise you, wind up, air. You, otherwise you wind up with headaches. Interesting bit of trivia: the register at the base of the air circulation system is uh, is actually apart from a Toyota Corona. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Uh. Yeah. So huh. that was that's one of the the favorite bits of. Uh, of trivia of huh. the the guy who managed the uh, building nine uh, where the astronauts trained when we first got this he was like yeah there's parts from a Toyota Corona and that's both on the trainer as well as in actual flown shuttles <laughs> as well as <laughs> actual flown shuttles yeah, as well as uh, the the vent system some of the vent systems also have uh, <laughs> vent parts from Toyota from Volkswagen that? from Volkswagen Vanagons yeah does does Toyota know that I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. That's an excellent question. It's my summer shuttle, EJ. Dude, you order it from the catalog? Yeah, yeah. Toyota, the first car in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Chrysler had stuff in space. Right, though, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and NASA uh, is selling a gently used, or, yeah. well, not even driven Chrysler. Not even driven, but it's... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's been lifted right. no, by rats. One owner. Yeah. Yeah. One so owner. Tesla wasn't first. Right. Tesla wasn't first. Yeah. No. Well, the BMW was first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they built the V2. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, yeah. EJ. So we have a mid deck here, right? And then the flight deck's up there. Yep. There's a third deck to the shuttle that a lot of people don't know about down yeah. there, right? So the that it's more like a crawl space. Yeah. So yeah, you've got a lot of storage down there. Um, uh, a lot of the CO2 canisters that they would use for, for air scrubbing would be stored in here, and then they would the servicing where they would. It, it's uh, we've got an interactive that actually shows how it works out in the gallery. We can take a look at after. Cool. But they would basically have this kind of cylinder. It kind of reminds me of the um, 
the uh, in, in the movie The Rock, uh, the, the, the string of pearls. Yeah. Uh, they, it's, it's, it's kind of this yeah. sort of thing where you, you slide out. Um, Carla was a prom uh, queen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, lose a fight, but really go fast. <laughs> yeah. To me, it Winter's seems really space Victorian, shuttle. too. It goes right back to, you know, uh, you know the first uh, flight to the moon and the old yeah, movies yeah. of it. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just have these kind of cans with all these latches yeah, and things that you have Jules to you know, pull out and, and regularly swap out into the, into, um, the cylinder in here to, in order to keep the, the oxygen fresh. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay, so you got the third deck down here. Now, th that's the kitchen. So that's the kitchen, right um, yeah. and and that is one of the things yeah. that they would actually train for on this trainer. The, that's the, the kitchen. The kitchen was fully functional on the trainer. Uh, they would do uh, basically meal prep training. Yeah. So they they would walk through the uh, how to use the galley. Uh, they would a whole, a whole meal and then disposal of uh, of the the wet trash afterward. Okay. Uh, interesting story uh, from my own personal uh, career related to the galley is when we were reinstalling this and all the stuff, I, I mentioned they had pulled all this stuff out. I'm going through all these crates, pulling stuff out, and I pull out this foil-wrapped bladder, and all of a sudden I have liquid all over my hands. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Is it hydrazine? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. And, oh, no. Uh, no, it was it was the water tank for the galley, and standard operating procedure when they decommissioned it, they just spiked a big hole through the middle of it uh, and then didn't do a very uh, thorough job of draining it. So it was it was uh, uh, stale shuttle water. Shuttle water. Is it like in a vial somewhere at the museum? Like, no, I think, I think we, we, uh, we, we have the, the tank. It doesn't look like it's a Oh no! I think I think I see it kind of tucked back in there. <laughs> but yeah, we, we we got it more better drained. But it was it was uh, yeah it was it was, uh, it was a surprise. Yeah, I was not nice. expecting that when reaching wanna... into a box full of uh, spacecraft parts. <laughs> Is this the original the lighting they would have had in here? No. So we actually had um, oh, sprinklers. For example. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So in order to, in order to add access, we did have to make some minor. We tried to keep modifications as minimal as possible. Uh, we did have to add sprinkler systems if we well, were going to provide, in here. provide public access. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, fair point. Uh, yeah. I don't know how up, up uh, to speed the Tukwila Fire Marshal is on. Space However, hardware. the exterior of the, the trainer is plywood. Plywood, so yeah. That's, yeah. That's, Not going to do much good in here. Right. Uh, we do, I believe we actually have sprinklers running under the belly of the trainer. Right it's actually to put EJ out when he spontaneously combusts. Yeah. <laughs> With um, excitement, obviously. <laughs> but uh, we did swap out the lighting with LEDs. Okay. So, yeah. Nice. We have like a real light uh, temperature. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, in, in terms of color temperature? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Um, the, the and that's, that's part of the real lights over there. Yeah, yeah, so those, right those are those are some oh, of the yeah. actual lighting. So these things here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Now, okay, so that, I had another question. This control panel here, is this like a, that's a slave? A that's a circuit board. Okay. So, okay. so that, um, they, they have these uh, okay. both here and on the, you know, they've got them located in several different uh, it's spots redundant. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. That's cool. And then... All the shuttles avionics are behind the lockers, right? Yeah, There's so like server racks. So, yeah, there. so they had a yeah they had their forward avionics bay. They also had a, an aft bay. Um, but yeah, the vast majority of them are. are and that's are so. The if you have a problem when you're on orbit, you can take this apart. But yep. Didn't they do that? I think they did that during STS one. They started taking the lockers apart and going at the. I want to demonstrate something for bay. chat real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Just because because Das's camera is shoulder mounted. Yeah. It's really funny for us because we keep seeing him going. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, at least on top of the hardware. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Off the wall, off the wall. We were told not to touch. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a fisheye lens, so when I want to okay. zoom in on something, I go like this. Good. And that's me zooming in on stuff. Nice. So. <laughs> so, okay, this thing. Okay. This is like a mixed use log. Like yeah, you can so, do whatever so this you want. is the, the mid deck accommodation rack. Okay. Um, and it, it's the, the big feature that it provides is that it, it offers uh, power and data. Uh, oh, okay. For, for experiments, so they would do uh, any number of different things. One of the, the experiments that we call out specifically in the gallery is they would do like uh, crystal growth. So they would That's they could cool. install a furnace here, and uh, uh, a local Boeing exec actually won uh, the Resnick Award from the Society of Women Engineers for a crystal growth furnace that she cool. she flew on on shuttle, and uh, she donated her uh, materials to the collection, uh, and we've got that featured out there with. Uh, the uh, a portion of the gold uh, furnace tube 
Uh, and cool. so the, the gold coating, as it heated up, would actually turn clear so that they could view the, the, the crystal growing uh, inside the, the anvil. Um, but uh, she, she has funny stories about them being in flight because their whole thing is they're trying to, like, minimize vibrations and stuff. And, and they had a, a camera monitoring the, the, yeah. the experiment. And yeah, yeah. she's got a photo of, of the, an astronaut basically, like, you've got the door to the, the, the lavatory closed, and they've got their foot planted against the side <laughs> of the, the crystal furnace while they're, while they're using the bathroom. <laughs> like, Very scientific, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, okay, so let's move to that. That's the yeah, head over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That's the bathroom there. there. Oh, um, uh, is that... So, yeah, here, I'll, that's I can, huge out. Very, That's uh, my other space poop story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, wow. So, so I'll so get the camera up this mm-hmm. way so people can see. There we go. Yeah, and, uh, there you go. I can sit here, right, on the entrance? Yeah, yeah, okay. No step on the wall. <laughs> well, so if you're in launch configuration, you'll notice a lot of the, um, the, the stuff along the, aft, uh, uh, along the aft wall of the, the trainer is all the controls are recessed. That's so that... Uh, during launch configuration, they could they could actually step on those panels without damaging switches, that's why that's and there. that's why this is there. That was a, a bench for, uh, for helping the astronauts get into their seats. And <laughs> with the panel cover for this, then? Um, I I don't think <laughs> they so. Just relied on they, yeah, they they just re- you know it provided a modicum of, of protection. And now, this thing in flight when the thing's on orbit, this mm-hmm. stuff wouldn't be here. They probably would they take this out? Would they take the bench out? I don't know in terms of the yeah. the, the specific uh, yeah yeah procedures. Yeah, no, no problem. And then you got a you got a little privacy curtain here. Yeah, yeah. so you get visual <laughs> privacy only. Uh, you've got you got a couple of <laughs> visual <laughs> privacy only. Okay, let's make sure those corona parts. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, and, and there were reports after the early shuttle mission specifically about the toilet system, and reading some of those is, is, is kind of... Yeah, it's just <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> Secret Thanksgiving problem where the they were losing air through the toilet. Oh so, no! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's uh, Frederick Gregory. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, it started losing air through it. <laughs> Alarms go off, yeah. and it starts replenishing from the uh, oxygen tanks, which okay. are cryogenic. Right. Yeah. And the inlet is in mm. the toilet. Oh no! So he's getting frozen. <laughs> <laughs> losing air. Right. Yeah. And Story Musgrave is the guy that yeah. comes in to like fix everything. Of course he is. Of yeah. course he is. Yep. Yeah, because because yeah, they they would vent at least. Uh, well, they would vent everything out into the vacuum of space. They would they would dump the you know liquid waste and then frozen waste. At least in the early toilets, they had this what was called the slinger. Uh, so air suction pulled stuff down and then inside the chamber there was basically a propeller that would fling everything against the sides of the chamber and then they would open a port to the out to space, which would freeze dry everything as it's as it's uh, caked against the. the That's side like the the, uh, the shuttle rainbow sometimes, right? right? Yes. I don't want yeah. that near well, you yeah. see them as shooting stars, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. well, solid waste would stay on board. I I just want to know who had the unenviable task of, of emptying all of that stuff out once it got back down and had been sitting in the the you know the Florida sun for so it is like hours. Hours. Right. the new acid tanks, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. probably. <laughs> is, there, is there enough air circulation that smell would be an issue? Um, <laughs> when you're in space, most of your mucus goes up yeah. into your nose, so you can't smell. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And y'all, let's do this right quick. We've got a bunch of people that have been joining us. Let's run around and just introduce ourselves again for everybody that's joined us. Sure. Um, we're at the Museum of Flight right now, and we're inside of the... What's the official name for this? Uh, the Full Fuselage Trainer. Full uh, Fuselage Trainer. That is the, the, the very user-friendly NASA uh, acronym they the FFT, uh, but we refer to it for the general public often as just the space shuttle trainer. The space shuttle trainer, right. And with us we have from the museum, everybody uh, introduce yourself. I'm Jeff Nunn, uh, I'm the adjunct curator for space history here at the museum. Excellent. Ben, who's Baron, I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. I'm a <laughs> EJ, also a nerd. <laughs> I'm Ted, the PR guy. The PR <laughs> guy, nice. And I'm Scott Manley. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, cool. And then what, what, about, what about you? Oh, well, I'm Das. I'm just the guy that has a camera strapped to me right now. So <laughs> um, we are on a virtual field trip with Vectors. And again, massive thanks to the museum for allowing us to come here and share this with everybody. So, all right, brief interruption. Sorry, right. there are a bunch of people asking, like, who are all these people? So oh, gotcha. now you know. Yep. <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. 
So uh, what's our what's our next plan here? Um, so uh, we could we can head up onto the the flight deck. It is significantly more cramped up there. So typically we only uh, go up there with a, a total of, of four people, including one one staff person. Okay. So I imagine we could go up in a couple of shifts okay. uh, yeah. if we wanted to. So yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and close. Here, yep, I'll step, step out this, this way. way. I'm gonna get some pictures of that while you guys are up there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and of course, we, ha- we have a Soyuz toilet out in the gallery I for Paris yeah. as well, yeah. uh, including a video of uh, Charles Simone demonstrating it using a squirt bottle uh, oh, right. during yeah. his mission. So, um, all right. One of the most popular videos yeah. on our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, is the space toilet or? Yeah. yeah, especially the Charles Simone and the Russian hobby yeah. horse, as they yeah. call yeah. it. <laughs> the <laughs> Russian <laughs> hobby horse. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's him and Mike Barrett. Uh, and uh, but so. Uh, heading up the uh, heading up to the flight deck, uh, we have our ladder here. Uh, feel this is part of the the artifact that you are welcome, at, of course, to touch because it wouldn't you know you wouldn't be able to get up there otherwise. You can't uh, float up there. No, no. We can't yeah, float the, up there. So the gravity, the, switch, the gravity switch, gravity switch was broken when we received the trainer. <laughs> uh, we haven't been able to get it working again. If someone can figure out how to how to turn off gravity, enable the micro gravity you know, switch. Yeah, you know, <laughs> micro gravity. Um, so uh, there are yellow the handholds. Those are also for helping you uh, navigate up and down. There's one here, one there. Uh, and then as you climb up, there is a gold-colored handle on the side of the, sh- the commander seat that you can grab onto, as well as a handhold set right about where your right hand would go in the floor of the, the flight deck. Gotcha. So as you're navigating up there, uh, when you get up there, uh, stand up slowly and head towards the aft end of the, the trainer. Uh, it, it, the head clearance there... Head clearance upstairs is way lower than it is down here. Okay. Uh, and it is particularly low toward the, the front end of the trainer. So. Gotcha. Right. So uh, you're going up first, yep, and then EJ. First. I'm going to go after him, and you spot me. Watch my back as I go up. Yeah. And then I'll get up there and watch y'all climb yeah. up the ladder. Okay. okay. That's so fine. I think, I think yeah. we can get a total of myself and three other folks up there. Gotcha. Time. And then we'll switch out. Yep. Right? Okay. All right, cool. Perfect. So, so all those all those games where the uh, like the terrain is marked with yellow or smeared with yellow paint and buildings and stuff to like yep. show where you can climb, mm-hmm. yeah. it's got a basis in the shuttle program. Right. Real Absolutely. things. <laughs> right there. NASA thought of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so as I go up, I'm going to stay close to the ladder and watch my back so yeah, I don't here, touch I'll, this, okay? I'll just get over here. Yeah, just tell me how close I am, all right? Just look up. Absolutely. Ready? All yep. right, here we go. All right, guys. Watch the side clearance there. All right, good. Yeah, you gotta go up into the right bunch. Up into the right? Yeah. Like that? I mean, yeah, yeah, you're good. All right, I'm good. Still clear. All right, cool. Oh, there's a handle right there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we good? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. (laughs) All right, cool. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. It is definitely tighter up here. Let's get EJ coming up. Oh. I got it. I was waiting for that. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so one more. Here. We can get one more up here. And then I'll, I'll back over into that corner yeah, there. Okay. We got one more coming? All right, all right. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Safe to grab? Uh, yes, that's yeah. good. That's safe to grab. You got a yellow, yellow handle right, right here. Right there is safe to grab. Watch your head. Yeah. All right, so I'll back into this corner here. <laughs> Like that, so, and I'll be right here, right. not not touching anything. There we go. Welcome to the flight deck. This is where uh, the astronauts would control the uh, the shuttle during launch and, and landing. Uh, during launch, t- or during launch, typically everything would would have been handled by computers, though they did have manual override options. Right. Uh, all of the manual overrides are right there on that center console. Uh, and uh, and then the they would have they had uh, five separate computers uh, that uh, during launch and landing during mission cr- critical moments four of them would all be running uh, basically the exact same program checking against each other mm-hmm. uh, and then the the fifth would be held in reserve with kind of the the emergency backup okay the we need to get back down as quick as possible uh, program which was much more limited. And the, the, the commander's, uh, you can notice on the commander's joystick, uh, there's a silver button there. That could switch over to that emergency, like, we need to get down program. Yeah. Uh, 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 
so just by by uh, depressing that button, but it, it wow. took took a bit of force in order to actually uh, uh, hit that. And then once they were up in in space, they would reassign some of the computers to to cover various things like uh, like like their the life support and, and that sort of thing. Um, it looks like RCS control. Uh, so yeah, so you've got you've got uh, controls are very similar to an aircraft uh, with the the. You've got the the stick that is in front of the seat controls roll, pitch, and yaw. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got the rudder pedals, and then that square knob off to the left there is the translational controller. So that's side to side, up and down. Which uh, yeah, the redundant control. Yeah, over here for yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so that uh, and then when you're in orbit, the and these would handle both the aerodynamic surfaces while you're while you're in atmosphere, and then switch over to the the RCS and OMS when you're in orbit. Um, so the the control stick could actually also be rotated in order to handle yaw when you were in uh, when you were in orbit. So it is. It looks like the the sticks are angled a little bit. Yeah. So I think I think they're. Think they swivel maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think they're on a swivel. We don't. You we, see that easy? We, we try not to to, <laughs> to, yeah. to mess with the the, the stuff in the, the yeah yeah too much uh, since it's been installed. So it's been a while since. Yeah. I mean, it, that's it looks like a right-handed configuration, right. right? Like I wonder if they could swap it if the pilot was left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I know. Think, I, think it, I think they had a lot that was customizable. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to, Astronaut uh, preference. Yeah, um, EJ, dude, do you know what this little is? That like to lock the rudder or something? You see a little handle yeah, on the pedals? I mean, maybe I'm not not 100 percent. Ah, this is cool. I, I just feet. And maybe so, like yeah, forward and backwards. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is cool, yo. No, there, there's a, a peripheral for, for farm sim that is exactly like one of those little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing for, for space sims. <laughs> uh, and EJ was pointing out uh, that there are redundant controls back here in in the aft. Uh, payload bay, or, or the, in the aft crew compartment, because once they were in space, they would typically uh, point the shuttle backwards and fly engines first. And so, if they're doing uh, prox ops with uh, with any kind of uh, like when they're docking with the space station, or when they are trying to rendezvous with a satellite, they would actually flip the X Y the the X, or which axis is this? Switch the control point. Yeah, yeah. Switch the control point uh, so that like that, a that would be you know for all of their references that would be forward and then fly from here. Yeah. And then um, this is this is the docking ray. The, these yep. these tell your range yep. to target and center. Yep. Center. Yep. Center. And then there's your translational control. Yep. <laughs> and then you've got so you'd have two people. So for for satellite uh, rendezvous, uh, they had they would have someone flying the the canad arm here. So this is actually. The Canada Arms translational okay. control, and then the, the Canada Arms oh. rotational controls down there. Oh. The translational <laughs> for the for the um, for the the shuttle itself when you're flying from here is are these controls here. So gotcha. you've got translational, ah. rotational, and then you've got all your your various uh, uh, adjustments. So on the shuttle trainer, a lot of these uh, these. Uh, Controls up here are what NASA refers to as volumetric mock-ups, right. uh, meaning they don't work. Yeah, uh, they did do a. They feel of, right. Yeah, they feel right. Yeah. Uh, they did a number of specific trainings uh, here on the the flight deck on the shuttle trainer. They did a lot of photography training, uh, and in particular, payload bay lighting training. Ah. Because when you've got sunrise and sunset every uh, you know a sunrise or a sunset every forty five minutes, full cycle every ninety minutes. You 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 want to make sure you're light you're up to speed on how to adjust your lighting conditions yeah. as you're flying through. Uh, I mean, fashion areas. lighting is very important. You have to yeah. be able to see yeah. what you're doing. So, like, uh, were there lights in the payload bay? The, there, the corners, there were lights right? in the payload bay, um, and then they they also had Camera. a fully functional uh, closed circuit TV system, which is what those monitors it. are. And those that was also fully functional yeah. here on the the shuttle trainer, and they would train okay how to you know as they're as they're. You know, going through sort of what their their routine would be for payload bay operations, they would learn how to use the the CCTV system here on the on the shuttle trainer. Yeah, um, at, at the corner of the payload bays and then on yeah. the arm and the latching end effector, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and and also and so not just the the shuttle's cameras, but they would they would train on their handheld cameras uh, here on the FFT ah. as well. So there's there's actually an interesting photo taken on the FFT of John Glenn when he did his return to flight on shuttle uh, training training with a uh, with a, a handheld camera here on the flight deck. <laughs> so, that's crazy. This is crazy. I like this. There's a sunroof too. Yes, uh, and and hey, so you need to see where you're going for the <laughs> so. In the event of an emergency, uh, this was one of your egress routes, and that was another thing they used, uh, uh. They, they trained for here extensively. So these pouches, uh, 
each held uh, a. They're, they're numbered for the crew members, and they each held uh, basically a mountain climbing repelling system called the Sky Genie. And in the event that you had to make an emergency landing and were not able to access the the main hatch, you could blow out the the number eight window here uh, and hook up your your repelling rope and repel down the side of the the orbiter. And so that is one of the big trainings that they did here on the FFT. So they're in <laughs> full hell. they're in full pressure suits climbing out through this tiny window yeah, uh, like and then and then repelling down the side. So that's you, when it was still on the launch pad? No, no. Vertical? This, this okay. Was, this, was a, this was a uh, in, in the event of wow. an off-nominal landing. Off-nominal so, landing. Okay, so, thank you. So if you landed, could not reach the main access hatch for some reason, and had to get out another way. Gotcha. They had the, the repelling <laughs> system. They're I was up. like, they're going to repel down that way. Like, that's how they have... No, no, no it was no, when no, it was no, landed on its wheel. On. I yeah. didn't crash. I'm just off-nominal. I'm just off-nominal. <laughs> <laughs> they are... Uh, if they if they were on the pad, they'd use the slide wire baskets, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, so th they did a couple of different emergency trainings uh, on on the FFT. <laughs> Most of them related to post landing emergencies. <laughs> Do you want to switch with me? Is no, your neck going to kill you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there was the Sky Genie system. There was the escape slide that I mentioned as we were coming in. So the the shuttle had an inflatable escape slide, just like just like an airliner. Uh, if they didn't have air stairs that they could yeah. could access, they could. <laughs> so they they trained on that, uh, and then. <laughs> After Challenger, one of the things they, they were looking at is uh, in the event that they needed to, uh, to ditch in the, in the ocean, they did some analysis. If they had a full payload bay and they tried to ditch with the shuttle, the payload would very likely just oh, come flying forward. Like so slam they, into the... So they, uh, they determined that uh, it would be probably better to figure out a way for the crew to bail out. Uh -huh. And so they actually created a, um, the crew escape system as a telescoping pole right. that would have been installed on the mid-deck. And in the event that there was like a very particular window in which they could use this thing. And right. It, it, I am dubious about how, how effective or, or it's what, like, what conditions, because basically the, the vehicle would have to be stable enough for the commander to engage an autopilot, which would hold it at a certain wing-low angle, <laughs> and then they, they would be able to deploy the pole and slide, and, and slide down the, the pole so that it would guide them below the wing so they don't smack into the wing as they're, they're bailing out. That's like, oh yeah, we totally have a plan. Let's yeah. hope we don't have to use right. it. But no, there's a plan. Yeah. Like. So, wow. um, so they learned how to install the, the, the pole here on the, the FFT, and then they did uh, hatch, uh, hatch egress uh, in the event that they needed to use it. So they would hook up to it and basically you know, roll out onto a mat <laughs> uh, here on the, the, the trainer. So wow. they tested the system, I believe, down at China Lake right? um, using, uh, I can't remember what the, the, the aircraft was that they used, but they, they put it in the aft door of this aircraft and had a bunch of, of Navy, Navy test jumpers uh, actually use it in flight uh, aboard that vehicle. But, the Navy test jumpers. Right, like, yeah, 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 but it was it significantly lower altitude, yeah. significantly slower speed than what you'd have on a... No on, I mean, think about it. For the shuttle to fly yeah. level, you right. need to be going 200 miles an hour. Right. Yeah. That's like minimum. It, it does not fly level below that. It falls like a brick. <laughs> That's okay. Wow. Let's just this, get into orbit. Mm -hmm. This all, this better. looks like uh, like they have instructions and stuff. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So they could they could uh, hook. You know, again, you've got the Velcro everywhere for for astronauts to be able to uh, to to uh, keep stuff still while yeah. they're uh, while they're in 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 microgravity, uh, and then. Other a couple other things to point out is there would be a total of four astronauts up here during, yeah. during launch and landing. They, there would be two seats installed here, yeah, uh, so bolts. you see the bolts. Uh, the person in the center uh, was basically like the assistant to the pilot and commander during launch. They'd be they they had the swivel stick, right? Which is the like the the reach aid that would would be able. To, to hit any of the overhead switches, that would be hard for the pilot and commander to see. So they could just and then they would, they would be monitoring the consumables. Uh, ah. Oh, that's all this. Yeah, so, so those, the, the, your, your consumables are all up there on the, kind of that overhead panel, uh, just above the, the pilot and commander. God, the cryo fuel cell stack. Freon right there. Freon H2O air Look temp. Ohms. Uh, so oh, Ohms pressure. Are, these, are those two for the Ohms pods and that one's for the, the forward? Um, so left, so see. left, right, forward. So forwards in the center. Yeah, yeah. that's the aft left or aft port, yeah. and that's the aft starboard yeah. right yeah. there. Yeah, and I think you could switch between. 
systems. Yeah. 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 There's yeah, like yeah. a switch. You yeah. Could, you could flip it and then. Okay. There's your prior. So is that for low Z thrust? Right and then there's your quantities out on a seven segment display right there. <laughs> and then mission elapsed time. That's. I mean, I, I can't. I'm, I'm busy. Right? Yeah. I can't get over this. Like everywhere you turn, every surface has switches and panels yeah. and. Like, yeah. there's literally not a surface in here that doesn't have some sort of equipment. There's and Velcro. You have to be able to immediately locate yeah. every single one of them. Yeah, I believe yeah. it's over 2,000. Wow. Uh, every astronaut had to have at least a basic level of understanding of, of where everything was. It does. Yeah. Look at these switches. ET separation, about, manual auto. How about how they got to flip that? So you said, you said if you wanted to do that, you can... Yeah. They never, I don't believe they ever flew the shuttle, like somebody flew it into orbit. People flew no, the Saturn V into orbit, right. not, not, not the shuttle. I, as far as I know, like, final approach like, and landing yeah, that's was, all, was... that's all piloted, they yeah. Had, they had the, the option to, uh, uh, <laughs> for manual override. Yeah, it, STS-2, they, uh, Joe Engel and Richard Truly mm. took it down manually yeah, through yeah. re-entry. But look at this. You have yaw trim right there, pitch trim. It's like an airplane, I mean... Yeah. There's your automatic command, dis automatic main engine shutdown right there. There's the right body there. flap upper right. Yeah, Look body flap that. trim right there. There's the Ohm's engine, priming the, the AJ-10s that are back there. You actually, you guys have one out, right? Yeah. So, so yes. the one we have is actually interesting because it's a, a prototype built by TRW. Oh. oh. So it, it is oh. not an actual Ohm's. It was built by TRW when they were in the bidding process, and it was designed to oh, test no a particular way. cooling method and it actually has Apollo era valves on it if you look at it, yeah. the serial numbers uh, for the, the the valves is it uh, is it a pintle injected engine i do not know huh cuz TRW made the pintle injectors for the lunar module descent yeah. engine that's uh I mean yeah. that that type of technology found its way into the SpaceX's Merlins a little later down the road, so they could deep throttle them. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's this is rad. So like you have, they switch these on the shuttle. These were all glass cockpits. Yeah, so the so that's them, right? that's an excellent uh, excellent observation. So yeah. the the configuration here on the FFT is is how the basically how the shuttles looked when they rolled out in eighty one. Yeah. Um, and so it's got the three CRT monitors uh, it, starting in the 90s. They, so basically what would happen is whenever they were doing an upgrade, they would roll one orbiter off of the fleet at a time yeah. to, to go through upgrades. Yep, yep. And so starting in the 90s, they started upgrading to glass cockpits. Yep, yep. And that rotation was scheduled to take place until the early 2000s. Yeah. Well, then Columbia, uh, the Columbia disaster happens, and... As part of the fallout of that, NASA is now, like, the orders are to re figure out how to finish the space station and then retire the shuttle. Yeah. Since they they had two crew compartment trainers, they upgraded those two to, to glass cockpits. And since they didn't use this primary instrumentation, they this uh, this was kind of... Uh, holding up the um, the rear guard with as they were going through the upgrade process yeah. on the orbiters, uh, they they ended up not upgrading yeah. this. So so the the crew compartment trainers have the the newer glass cockpit. We have the the OG configuration. The OG configuration. Yeah, little, little HUD. yeah dude, EJ, look, check this out. What's up? The uh, yeah, 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 the uh, heads up display. <laughs> yeah, the visibility. Out of out of the from the piling commander seats is not good. Yeah, yeah. I is mean, that the glass they had, like like the actual glass that's being used for the uh, for the windows right now, because there's just like cool almost yeah. insulation kind of effect if you look. I, it. So I don't know that this is is that the the windows are built with the. I don't know whether or not they're built with like the space to the, rated, yeah, to the yeah. space rated uh, yeah. specs because I mean, you've got the side windows that are completely yeah, open, so they're they open. Can, they could shout to the to their, their texts and things outside, and so we can get some airflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> this is cool. I mean, we are probably going to want to give the other guys some chance to be yeah, up here. Like, yeah. did we miss anything uh, specific, um, dude? EJ, um, you have your your video recorders over there. Mm. That's a video recording. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. And then, uh, yeah, all the camcorder bags down you there. You have the ISS. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing, just poke the camera out through oh, yeah. the, yeah, the, the aft. Well, so we've got the IUS, which was uh, a Boeing project. Uh, someday I'd love to add a payload like Galileo or something yeah. to it. Yeah, um, now we're talking. But uh, w then we have an. So our payload bay configuration is a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a little bit of a chimera because they wouldn't have had. We've got the ISS docking port there. Uh, they would not have had. Uh, that docking port installed if they were, weren't going, you know, if they weren't. Yeah, uh, it's all about that weight. You'd go into ISS, but you can see how that um, how that that port works. Okay, recommended method of descent. 
for the stairs. Yeah. Uh, great question, and it's not <laughs> it's not the most intuitive here. So let's let's shuffle around. Let's all do okay. a little dance. I'll get, in the, get in the and, back here and just kind of show you. So uh, heading down the stairs. So this is also fine to hold on to. We added okay. this to mostly keep uh, astronauts keep. who come through from trying to sit in their old seats. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so yeah. Have, so you want to sit here. You don't want to start right. trying to go down backwards. So have a seat here. Get your foot in handholds, and then rotate around to come down. Gotcha. So I'm gonna okay. Myself back up. All right. Good deal. Falling down those that ladder enough times. All right. I'm gonna try it. All right. Demonstrate for us, Baron. <laughs> the potentially incorrect way of doing this. <laughs> we'll learn from your example. Oh, no, that actually isn't too bad. Oh score, yeah. Scorecards. Scorecards. <laughs> Six from the Russian judge, like. <laughs> hey, there you go. Oh, nice. All right, I can go next. Right. And I will, I'm actually going to reconnect here right quick, so let me come this way. And, oh, right. there you yep, yep. Yeah, there's some kerbal yeah, eyes yeah, on the ground we, there. we've got these, these, there were two bolts up here that for some reason were yeah, I'm gonna come down. differently okay, from the others, and you can actually pull the bolts out. Yeah. All right. So I'm caught on there, good, and I'm going to see if we can get this done. I don't think EJ's going to leave. EJ's just going to live here now. All right, this is my house now. This is my house now. All right, so there's that. What I really, what I really like seeing is how, like, the thought behind putting certain buttons oh, yeah. in certain spots, yeah. that's, that's wild. Is my back good, dude? Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah, you're clear, man. I don't take up much space, so. Like, you got your food redundant fuel cells mm -hmm. right there. That's, <laughs> that's right. It's, it's, it's wild. wild. Yeah, wild piece of tech. I can't believe it. I still can't believe it. Right, right. Right. So they have three astronauts, and the satellite is spinning like this. And they're grabbing it with their hands. On opposite ends, almost, for the packs. Like, yeah, lay, lay them opposite. I don't know. I, 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 that's what I'm wondering. I just noticed little, little collars on the sleeping bags. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whew, whew. Can I sneak up here? Yeah. 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 You'll, tour, you'll, yeah. you'll okay. appreciate. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. record this. Yeah. Oh, actually, that might be hard. Never mind. Do you need some help? Yeah. The camera. No, I was gonna. What? What do we got? Yes. Scott, that's a pretty cool shot right there. <laughs> Which shot? This one? Both of them, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, all right, all right, all right. whoa, 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 whoa. It's the phone. The wallet, the phone, right? I love how the Canada arm stuff has a this is cool. Ted, thank you for letting us do this. This is really cool. Good, good. How are you, like it? How you doing, EJ? <sighs> I took a lot of pictures up there. <laughs> I took a lot of pictures. Sorry. Sorry, I wasn't talking. I was taking a lot of pictures. No, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how, like, where they chose to put certain things on the shuttle. So it's like... It, you could tell, like, I mean, uh, no crap. Obviously, you just, it's like they had to fight. It's a juggling act between the plane stuff and the spacecraft stuff. Like, it's like there's there's spacecraft stuff next to plane stuff, but the, you know, where everything was, you know, he was talking about like how the guy that's sitting third seat, so like where the flight engineer would be, control over some of the switches because the pilots can't, like, yep, can't, can't get to them. Yeah. Like, there's so many switches for all the different systems on board. I mean, like it's just everything. Well, that part of the, the that's part of the training because when yeah. you're when you're sitting when you're strapped into your seat, you've got a helmet on. Yep. You can't look what's behind you. Yeah, exactly. So like you some of those switches know, are behind them. Yeah, you have to know where everything okay. is to be able to found that operate something by touch only. Yeah. God. And then, I'm just amazed how every square inch is covered with something. Yeah. yeah. Every down here. Everywhere. Every single piece of this was thought out by somebody. Like, it's like, okay, sh should we put the kitchen over here? Should we put the kitchen over there? Where does the toilet go? Like, where does the avionics bay go? It's, it's wild. It's, uh, I mean, like, I was just like, I can't believe the thing flew. Like, how did, all right, let's do this, sure. What I love about the cockpit, though, is, um, is it, it, it is like two vehicles yeah. in the same place. Because right. the nose section, you know, you're up front, the pilot and commander. Yep. 
if you're used to flying a large airplane, you know, airliner size or something, you'll be very comfortable in there. It's yeah. about the same size, same configuration. The only big difference is that the throttle is just kind of this goofy handle that goes from zero to body flat. <laughs> Um, but the rest of it's just like flying an airplane. Yeah, it's wild. But then you turn around, and it's, totally and it's a spacecraft. <laughs> yeah, it's like the lunar, the lunar descent module is like pasted to the back yeah. of it. Yeah, you know, like, you're, all right. you're standing up. You've got controls like this. Yep. Your feet don't do anything. Which yeah, you're is just weird for a pilot. Sitting, you know, yeah. you, want, you want to do that. You like roll or use the rudder or something. As as much as I've done this, whenever I was up there and I looked out the back window to the payload bay with the with the sample payload that's sort of up above it, I was like. That looks amazing. It's like, I got so, chills a little bit. It's so wild. Yeah. What is this? <laughs> Somebody photoshopped our picture from the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, it's, it's really cool because you understand how this works and you understand, yeah. oh, there are windows back there so they could see the payload bay and they could see when they were docking with the ISS or whatever. But to actually stand in that position and sort of look out, it... It really feels amazing. Yeah, like it's, it's very cool. It's pretty wild, guys. Yeah. It's, I, it's I cannot say. Everything but the weightlessness. Yeah, exactly. We need like a like a harness system that sort of holds you up, like in the movies. So. Got to get the, that switch, the microgravity. Switch. Get the microgravity switch. Yeah, but Ted, thank you so much for letting us do this and coming along with us. And this no, is really a uh, really an amazing there, thing. Right? No airlock. No. No, no. Can we put the camera in there? Is that okay? <laughs> I mean, I can point at it, sort of right? Slip yeah. It. Yeah. Go a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, on that's the airlock, guys. That's that's where you get to the space station. So the airlock and the docking ports of the space station are the same thing. Like it's it's one contained unit. And that the cool thing that a lot of people don't know is that. If you don't need that, like if the shuttle wasn't going to the space station or something, you take that out. Put like a blind in. Or right, the door's right here, actually. Yeah, you can take it out. There's a pressurized door right there. You can close that. And I, I think on some of the early shuttle missions, they actually had the airlock right here. Yeah. Yeah. Columbia yeah. Um, was okay. originally, the wall was right here. So it was yeah. a lot less space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, watch footage, you know, from like STS-1. You see... John Young and Bob Crippen kind of floating around, and there's a wall right here. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. So they clearly they opened it up, which is nice. That's cool. Just there's, knocked down a couple walls, remodeled this apartment. There's you know, so much room for activities. One bedroom, seven. I mean, seven bedrooms, one bath. It's great. <laughs> 400 square feet. 400 maybe, square feet, including ceilings. Is but, it four? <laughs> including ceilings. But, but the view. The view. Right. <laughs> oh I mean, wow. Like sitting right here, it's like okay, you go. And you just yeah, you just, that was your view yeah, when you took oh, off. And F forty three. All right, cool. And you know, you might see on re-entry. You know, you're going to see this glowing. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. From up here, but. I got to. I want to. I want to fly up there. <laughs> <laughs> These guys can, can stay down here. Yeah, yeah. Up there, you know? can, can, have you ever been on a plane where they don't quite uh, secure the little service cart? Yeah. It is sort of like you start to take off and it rolls back. <laughs> can you imagine? It's like oh, we're going to space. Oh, that's not secured. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, there are so. So many things like the checklist was insanity. Yeah, I would bet sitting there, they're looking at those latches. Okay, yeah. Close, 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 close. Oh, wait. Oh, get that, that one. one. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. these. I guess these are the latches right here, right? Here's the door. God. And there's your flusher. So I guess you exit the same way that you did. Oh, yeah. Sit on that and pivot. All right, man. One of the things that I like about coming here with former astronauts oh, yeah. um, is that for a lot of them, this is like seeing their first car again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. Things back, you know, like uh, Tom Jones recalls how he says that when I walked into Building 9 and there's the full fuselage trainer, that's when it hit me. That I'm really an astronaut now. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, God. when they come and see it again, you get a little, you can kind of see that in their head. It's like they're looking at it like, oh. The gears, the gears yeah. turn, and you're like, yeah. This is fond memories, you know, it takes me back. Yeah. Hello? What's up? You all right? That makes sense. I'm going to sick. I'm going to go to the cafe and grab like a, like a drink, maybe a snack. I'm going to put something in my stomach, and I'll rejoin the group. All right. Hey, feel better. Cool. Space sickness. Le leave okay. our booties. <laughs> Happens to everyone. Yeah. The yeah. first victim of space sickness. You might want to take booties. off your booties, though. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but, you know, it is a fashion statement. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly acceptable If it means here. I get to walk around here, I will wear these every day. Yeah, every day. EJ, like, wants a set for home to practice. Like, check us out. Like, <laughs> Stop dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. And so much of this stuff, like, I, there's just things that are plugged in. Like this line right here, right? What do you think that is? Does it say? I mean, it looks like a pressure line. It's an O2 line. An O2 line. It says LEH025. I don't I mean, I have no idea what oh, that means. Look, no, it comes down to, it's almost like those are plugged into the seats of the astronauts. See, there's like oh, an umbilical right. sort of thing. Yeah, right. Right, gathered up yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I know somewhere around here is communications. They could plug in comms around here somewhere. Yeah, I don't yeah. know where it is. Is that so? That's mid deck. Oh, mid deck audio. Yeah, yeah right there. Yeah. Mid deck audio. Music. Tone, volume. Yeah, you got to play some tunes. The speakers. Play some tunes. There's the speakers right there. You're good. Dude, they get a hundred thousand channels. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> that yeah. says volume actually. Yeah. So, master speaker volumes. And then what? See, like, this is what's wild. You have your you have your radio, and then oh, CO two removal system <laughs> right next like, to it. Here, you want to see something wild? Look at this. Look at this. So you have your you have your, you have your door. And then there's the there's the waste there's the waste system, <laughs> wastewater. So your flusher for your toilet is, is the control panel for the toilet is right by the door. Yeah. I mean, bathroom by the door. That makes sense, I guess. I mean, using all the available space is really a, it, it, the wall is just like wallpaper with Velcro. Wait, is that what was on the original or is that? I believe that there's actually a lot of room in the mid. There's more room I, in the mid. That's a good question. Thought. I think the Volkswagen ones are these over here in the corner. I, yeah. My, that, that looks like a Volkswagen air vent. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it had one of those Yeah, that on just looks like vans. a house. On your yeah, old like van. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then they'd label. All right. And watch out. The booties are a little slick, Scott. So. Yeah. It's okay. I, I've done stuff in these before. Here we go. <laughs> I had to work in a you know, radioactive contamination. So you learn you use the booties a lot. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And then you put them in little radiation detectors to see if you brought in. You brought any radiation in? Yeah. So like there's more air conditioning system yeah, down there. Yeah, so, that, so that's kind of like yeah. the, the intake for the 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 vent ventilation system. So that yeah. would have pulled the air in, run it through the the recycling system, and then spit it back out over here uh, at the at what you refer to as the speaking tube. The speaking tube. <laughs> Uh, I was pretty sure it wasn't a speaking <laughs> no, tube, no, but you know, like, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right here, I just noticed. Yeah. I, well, that's a silhouette, but uh, it's it like FFT mm -hmm. on it. FFT. Oh, in chat, since I've been in sort of the enclosed space here, I have not been reading a lot of chat, but now might yeah. be a good time if there's any questions. Okay. From chat, is that okay? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So chat, uh, right now I've got uh, Twitch chat up on my phone. I have put my phone away so I could use my hands to climb up the ladder and stuff. But if you've got uh, time or you've got questions, now is now the time to time, do it. And if you're wondering where we are, like it says on the screen, we are at, screen, we are at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, Washington. Uh, we are actually on a tour that you can do yourself. If you come to the museum, you can sign up for a tour of the yep. inside of the Full Food Slash Trainer here. you got to um, do this. You, yeah, yeah, this is cool. You're going to want it. And we have an awesome visitor services staff and volunteer corps. Some of the volunteers, their day jobs are working for, like, Blue Origin or their former NASA. And then they, in their free time, lead tours yeah. of the, the shuttle trainers. Oh, that's it, it. It really is an experience. Like, you go to a museum and you sort of walk around the museum yourself. And you're like, oh, okay, I can read this and read this. It is a totally different thing to come and have somebody who's, like, an expert yep. to explain what everything is. It's a completely different experience so if you've been to a museum before you're like oh yeah museums if you go to a museum and you talk with a guide or a docent or you sign up for something like this it's a whole different ball of wax it really is amazing it's like if you went to an art museum and you're looking at a painting and you're wondering why this is that way and that way and and then you notice that the volunteer docent standing next to you is the artist. Yeah. <laughs> Do that painting. Yeah. yeah. Say, well, here, I'll tell you exactly yeah. why I've used Here's that Here's what color. I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Cuz a lot of our volunteers not, you know, yeah. not just for space, especially for aircraft, you know, we've got guys who flew the B17. We've got, you know, test pilots yeah. for the, the the designers, the pilots, yeah. the engineers. Yeah. Yep. All right, grab some of those questions. You got questions? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Do some Okay. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All righty. All right, so actually, one of the viewers asked, uh, he's coming here on Monday. Is the Apollo exhibit still going to be here? Just on Monday is now. the last day. Oh. So oh, you buy, your, buy, buy your ticket, ticket online. Yeah. Uh, we are open until, uh, we have extended hours until 9 p.m. From, from now through Monday. So 
even during the work week, you can get over here after work. After uh, work. Uh, and it's actually a reduced cost uh, after 5 p.m. because only the, the side with the Apollo exhibit is open. Right. So if you want to save a little money, you can do that. Gotcha. Uh, let's see, anything else you yeah, but the fire, the fire suppression system is not original. No, 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 that's not. We yeah, that's we so to, that we can be here and yeah, be up to fire code. Yeah. Yeah. Hole there before. Uh, I, I don't know what we drove. We, we, tr yeah, we, tr oh. we tried our best to uh, to <laughs> disrupt the the original integrity of the the trainer as little as humanly possible yeah. while still providing access. Okay, I got another good one. Is it true that the Canada Arms design was based off of the Candu nuclear reactor fuel crane? What? I've that, never, yeah, heard, that never heard that one before. Never heard that one. Yeah. That is a question for uh, for McDonald Detweiler Associates. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> another question is, were any movies filmed in this thing? Yes. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. So uh, the, the movie Space Cowboys uh, <laughs> made use of the yeah. the shuttle trainer. <laughs> <laughs> You are in the presence of old movie stars. Old well. movie yeah. stars. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the toilet, Thailand? It's actually the head's right over there. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. It's not very funny. luxurious, yeah. though, com the, though, compared to the bags they had on Apollo yeah. and, and yeah. the, the hobby bag. horse they have on Soyuz. This is uh. actually pretty good. <laughs> God. Was there a throttle to the left of the joystick at the windows, and what would that throttle actually control on, yes. on the yes. flight deck? No. So, so, yes, that... that um, was actually a combination for the the air brakes as well as for when you're in orbit being able to to, to throttle the OMS system. Oh. oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> did they ever? My question is serious. Did they ever meet Forrest Finn? I don't know what that means. Forrest Finn? Yeah, I don't know. What that I, means. I don't know. I don't remember know. where Space Camp was filmed. I don't know if Space Camp was filmed. Space in Camp was, uh, so that is largely, I believe it was filmed at Space Camp at the U.S. Space and Rocket yeah, yeah. Center in Huntsville, Alabama. There you go. So. Another question is, which orbiters had eight seats and which only had seven? That's so that depended on the mission. So they would they would configure the seats to the mission, and I believe only one mission actually carried eight people. So. Cool. Yeah, the, the station rotation missions with Sonny Williams, right? Yeah, that's what that one. That's that. That's what that one did. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's one. <laughs> nice people waving at the. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's kids out there. Nice. <laughs> we should ask like we're floating. <laughs> right, so, my question is, what are these guys for? So, so these two white loops in particular are for um, the crew escape system. So that was that was a, a telescoping pole that would allow that would allow the the astronauts to, to bail out. So oh, that's what that's for. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so yeah. these we would be, these were, were would so it would it would clip onto uh, this this spot here and then this hard point here. And then they actually had two different configurations. So during launch and landing, it would be in a configuration to be able to, to deploy. But it hung, it's pretty substantial. We've got it uh, displayed outside the nose of the trainer. It would hang down pretty low. So once they got into orbit, they would actually stow it up against the ceiling to get a, a little more out of the way. Gotcha. So. And then these guys right here that say LEH 02, 7 and 8, and then there's 5 and 6 over there. What, do we know what those are for? This is actually one of my questions. <laughs> this is EJ's question. Um, <laughs> Long-time streamer, first-time caller. Right. Like, yeah. I actually do not know what those, those I mean, specific... I was thinking it might be... For the crew. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's Oh, a, oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. They had O2 backpacks. And, the, and set, they did yeah. have... Uh, this. The trainer does have a fully functional uh, O2 system. Uh, because they they did suited trainings in, yeah. in here. So. Yeah, I mean the the output of that is this brown yeah. coil right yeah, here. Yeah, that, that, that you you ha I, I'm pretty sure you have just figured that out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> See, part of, that's what I mean. Like yeah. it's what I was saying. Part of the reasons like, I like coming to this mm -hmm. stuff because you know it's and it's awesome to have yeah. notions, but it's it's interesting to figure out and kind of yeah. I like yeah. to kind of put myself in the position of the engineers. Right. Like, why is the flusher switch next to the door for the train? <laughs> right. right. I mean, like, there's well, a very good reason no, for that. There's flush and there's really flush. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. if you really need to flush, yeah. you open the entire there's hatch. Flush into the toilet yeah. and then there's flush to space. <laughs> yeah. so. What type of lights did they use? Fluorescent LED or? These are LEDs now because they're, they're LEDs changed them now. Out. They were not, at least in the trainer, they were not LEDs. I don't know if they had LEDs by the end of the shuttle yeah, program. Yeah. Um, I don't know the the specific answer to, to that question. I know some some of the exterior lighting, and actually this is a this is a story related to yesterday's thing because there's a lot of consideration, as, in particular outside, that you don't think about in designing lights for space. Well, yeah. the guy who designed the 
Docking lights for the Agena target vehicle in Gemini, the command module exterior running lights, the lunar module running lights, and the shuttle payload bay lights, and the, uh, the <laughs> MMU lights. Same guy lives here north of Seattle. Uh, got to meet him. Uh, really? Got to meet him just a few weeks ago, uh, and uh, we're, we're working with him to try to get uh, some samples uh, for our reinstalled Apollo exhibit after Destination Moon leaves. Yeah. But one of the fascinating things is those lights have to be able to survive both vibration during launch and landing, and uh, also heat. You know, have efficient heat dissipation. Yeah. So the for the. Um, uh, back in the Apollo days, you just got tungsten filaments. Yeah. And so yeah, if, they, yeah, if they're yeah. rattling around during launch and they, they make contact with each ah. other, you get a short. So, so they, they designed a, a bunch of, of uh, you know, a bunch of design considerations and how they put together the lights. The other thing is for the command module, those lights were in the, the stream of the, the rocket as it's launching. So they got really hot just from how fast the, the, the <laughs> they were they were they were launching and so uh, they used a uh, uh, quartz bulb covers rather than the glass. regular yeah so, so there's it's, an engineer it's thick. Yeah. It's yeah thick like i said too. every every component yeah. somebody yeah. put a crazy amount of thought yeah. into yeah, and, yeah. i so, mean I'm, we should do a fashion lighting field yeah. trip if he ever wants to be on the stream uh, you know if you know that guy so, <laughs> the, chat, the chat figured out that's leh's landing and entry helmet okay so, ah yeah, there, there you go, go. Thanks, yep. nice <laughs> Though I wonder if that terminology is is uh, related to uh, to the the original operational shuttle, where the only life support, yeah. supplemental yeah. life support they had was the the helmet. Yeah. In yeah. the pre challenger days. Yeah, yeah so. the, the peeps, with yeah. the little suitcase that yeah. they carried yeah. with them. Yeah. Does the shuttle have nav lights like an airplane? Like red and green on the wings? Uh, I, huh. I, I, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it land with lights, but I mean, that's, that's a way I mean, it that's did a land at, It did land at night. Um, but they had spotlights yeah. on the runway and yeah. stuff, yeah? That's a good question. That I can't know. picture any. Well, and, and a, a great resource for a lot of these questions, there is it is actually, it, there's a, a book by uh, a guy named Dennis R. Jenkins uh, that is like the technical Bible for the shuttle. And Dennis was a, a, an incredible consultant on this. He was actually the guy who was in charge of figuring out how to get all of the shuttles to their... Their, the museums that they were retired to. Not a bad uh, thing to put on your resume, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, mm. And he's uh, actually now uh, sort of the, the project lead for the California Science Center's uh, uh, display. Gotcha. So, but he yeah. wrote. He, he worked on shuttle throughout his in, entire, uh, you know, through throughout the most of the program, and over the years wrote this book that started out. Volume one was about this big. Yeah. Then uh, at, after the hundredth mission, he had you know school textbook size, <laughs> and then his final one uh, after the the end of the program is a three volume set, which is is uh, available now. And like he goes into all of those details. So any of those technical questions we can't an answer here are probably either in his book, or we could send him an email, and, and he would be able to to. to if he doesn't we know, could he send him an point. email. <laughs> he, he's been tremendously helpful in in uh, in putting this display together. And is, is uh, yeah, it's cool to have those like deep knowledge resources where someone yeah, has just spent yeah. their entire life uh, you know, focusing on. Yeah. Of course, then on the side, he writes an entire book about the history of pressure suits. Oh, you know. Oh yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> dressing for altitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Of course, Scott knows it. Yeah, of course, Scott knows so, it. Another, that, another, another question is FFT. Notwithstanding, what's your favorite shuttles? What's your favorite shuttle? That is a great question. Uh, I'm gonna say so. <laughs> being an OG kid from the early shuttle program, Columbia as the first one has a lot of you yeah. know like ha has a lot of memories for me. Endeavor is the one that I was actually able to get inside. Oh, so oh, well. that that <laughs> has, has a. a Okay. Uh, it's like this. Right now, my favorite museum is the Museum of Flight. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and it, it's interesting to note the, the differences between Sorry, an intrepid. actual shuttle and the FFT, because <laughs> the actual shuttles do not have all of the, the, the use weathering, because they, you know, they yeah. clean them up after yeah, the yeah. So they, they, you know, they smell much more sanitary than, than a... a than the, the trainer does. Yeah. The trainer does. The trainer, yeah. Or so they beat up on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I love. Yeah. About yeah. So what when, about you? What about you, Ted? What's your favorite? Probably Columbia All as right. well. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it was first. 
Um, I saw some of the early landings of it, oh, wow. and then yeah. that's the only one that I got up close and personal with yeah. Yeah, yeah. when it was in for ref her refurbishment in Palmdale. Yeah, because yeah, wow. Ted is... Yeah, I used to is, work down there. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, well, because that, you know, pretty cool. <laughs> we did landings, uh, not takeoffs. Yeah. yeah, and I actually <laughs> never got to see a launch or a landing, but I... I was living in Houston and did see one of the got one of the ferry flights stopped over at Ellington, yeah. so got to to see it on the the back of the the carrier when I was like in preschool, God. which is almost an absurd sight. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, know, yeah. It's you got a yeah. seven three seven on the back of a seven four seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do. Right. Like, I mean, the fact the fact that a seven forty seven could even be like field right. modified to do that is right. a testament to Joe Sutter. Well, and, and I also think it's, it's it's awesome that they used you know if you look at the photos you can see the American Airlines branding. Yeah. Through, <laughs> they, they just painted over <laughs> the the American Airlines branding uh, when NASA took them over God. in the early days. Yeah. So. yeah, like when you when you watch the approach and landing yeah. test, it still has the stripe yeah. on the yeah. side. Yeah. I'm just like, all right, just use yeah. that. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's there's a good question from right. Goalie Bear. Um, we're seeing this wall behind it. How thick is that wall between, like, here and space? Good question. So these walls, they actually had several layers. Right. Um, so they were actually much more substantial than uh, than what you would deal with with, like, an Apollo spacecraft because this was both an atmospheric flight vehicle and uh, and a, a space vehicle. Right. So it, the, the exterior construction is much more like an aircraft. And if we go to the aft end of the trainer, we've got some great photos of them building this trainer which was actually built from the design specs for uh for the shuttle so gotcha. so th there's you know it's got you know the sort of rib system just like an aircraft has under its yeah skin. you guys should right. take a look at that yeah we definitely should it looks metal yeah <laughs> yeah it's all wood yeah. yeah of course it's nasa so they yeah. made it look just like the exact Plunge shuttles were construction. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the shuttles you built, you had the fuselage mm -hmm. and all that, and then this was like a pod. Yeah, yeah. Literally it's basically yeah. inside yeah. the fuselage and built like this. Yeah. So the shuttles were actually very modular in the way they were constructed, and when they built Endeavour, they basically had a bunch of spare parts that they put together to yeah. build an actual shuttle. Yeah. So. Well, and that's like, you know, the, the story with Challenger, it being the vibration test article that, you know, it was, yeah, they, uh, yeah, SDA that they then retro, retrofitted to, to be a flight vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Surprised they were going to yeah. do that. Right. Yeah. Saying, you know, too expensive. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going in, that's a good segue into me. Challenger is my favorite because yeah. of that. All yeah. the stuff that they learned from Columbia, they put into Challenger and it ended up being the lightest shuttle. Yeah. And then all subsequent shuttles built after that were based off of its design. Yeah. Enterprise and Columbia are like, the Mark One, and then mm. Challenger was like the Mark One yeah. B. You know? Yeah, that's I'm cool. an Endeavour fan myself. Yeah. Yeah. Endeavour fan, Scott's an Endeavour fan. There you go. Long endurance, named mm. after a British ship. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thomas, what about you? Me? What's your favorite shuttle? I never got to see any of them fly, man. I lived in Atlanta for years and years, and I'm like, oh, there's a shuttle launch. I should just drive down. Because it's, it's a seven-hour yeah. drive, six-hour yeah. drive. But I'm like, oh, they'll launch it next month. Oh, I'll go to the next one. And I never did see one fly. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's my favorite one? I am sort of a fan of Enterprise because okay. it was sort of the beginning. Yeah. It didn't yeah. actually go yeah. to space, but it did this sort of flight testing, and it was sort of proving that the brick could actually fly, and, yeah. and their plan would sort of work. And if that hadn't worked, everything yeah. would have sort of been redesigned another way. So yeah. I, don't, I don't mean to be like not any fun because it didn't go to space. But uh, in terms of a shuttle you can see at a museum, Atlantis is crazy. Have oh, you seen Atlantis? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my so, gosh. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty awesome. awesome that. Yeah. Atlantis is a beautiful display down yeah. at Cape Canaveral. And uh, they sort of have it in a flying configuration where it's tilted mm -hmm. sideways up on these big pillars. and. Yeah. Yeah, so I like Enterprise because it's sort of the, the granddaddy of this is going to work, and then I like Atlantis for the way it looks now. Yeah. And you can see the scars on it. Enterprise is cool. Um, have you seen the videos of the last approach and landing test? The no. landing? No. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. you got to watch that if you've never yeah. seen it. Yeah. Yes. So... It, it yeah, it's going, really, yeah. yeah, it showed that, okay, you're, we're used to seeing these beautiful, you know, mm. greasers coming on the runway, and this <laughs> one, it's a, you know, it's a PIO, PIO, mm. yeah, yeah, it went like this during yeah. the landing. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, it, it changed the way the rest of them would fly, obviously. Yeah. There's a big, big yep. research program into fixing that problem before they became operational. <sighs> I, so, I have family members who work for IBM on shuttle designing the computers, that, or the, oh, the right. software that did and they, they worked the approach and landing test. So talking to them about 
<laughs> when this human tries to take yeah. over in the pilot induced <laughs> o- oscillation, whereas their software was performing perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do we really need to put a manual yeah. switch in here? Yeah. Like, <laughs> now, I mean, could the shuttle the shuttle never did any automated landings. Huh? So, so it had an auto land system. Yeah. I suspect there was a lot more to do with personality, like. Yeah. Who in their right mind, coming back from space, no. is not going to at least take the the, yeah. the vehicle into and, the final approach? And, and I've asked astronauts that, yeah. and they're saying, there's no way I'm yeah. going to let some machine <laughs> <No>. do this, <laughs> this <laughs> landing. This is yeah. the only landing I'm going to do, and yeah. I've been training yeah. a lot for this. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not going to let no someone way. else do yeah. it. No, no way. way. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Oh, gosh. So it did have an auto lens. Yeah, it did. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Hey. So... To lower the landing gear, they needed to run a cable from a back panel yeah, to the console. But that was the one thing they couldn't. They had to do manually, yeah. and then they inv- they came up with a cable to do it remotely anyway. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> check so, me, uh, Baran. Check me. Check me. <laughs> check me. So at this point, we've spent uh, over an hour hanging out inside the trainer. The whole day. Good job. We're just gonna live here now. Oh, boy. How long are the tours? The tours are normally like 20 minutes or something? Uh, Yeah, I believe it's, uh, you've got, yeah, basically eight minutes on each deck. Gotcha, (laughs) gotcha. Eight eight minutes on each deck. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you got eight minutes, and I got eight minutes, and you got eight minutes, so that's a total. Yeah, no, we're good. It's about a half hour total? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Between sort of pre-entry, you know, safety briefing and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. uh, Thank you guys so much. It really is. We cannot say thank you enough for letting us come in and do this. Yeah. This is really cool. Listen to us blabber on about this. Like, we're fanboys for the longest time. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and walk outside. Yeah. Right. Let's do EJ, it. before we go, could you take a picture of me in here? I did. I already took a picture. Did you, did you get some pictures of me? Like, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want. Nice. <laughs> here, I'm going to be like an action <laughs> shot like this. Like, <laughs> they can't see you. Yeah, I don't know if the camera's running or not. <laughs> it is don't running right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah. Tell me I'm pretty. Because <laughs> a lot of the times we get we get concerns from the museum. They're like, "Oh, you have all these lights and tripods, and we really can't have a film crew nope, in that." Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, "This is the film. Like, I'm the film yep, crew right yep, now. That's it, man. Yep. So uh, I need some documentation. So yeah, and they're like, like, "What sort of equipment are you bringing?" It's like, yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I have pictures of you up there. Oh, if you thanks, want, dude. you want confined space. Yeah, I yeah. So flight. Thanks. Dude, so we're good. All right, cool. Thanks, so on. shall we egress? Yeah, yeah. So, right. so. Uh, this handle is is helpful for for getting you out of the the trainer. We did it's like a water slide. Yeah, it, 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 it's <laughs> no, actually getting off more fun. Getting actually, out. yeah, you can, oh, a little bit. And, and these uh, these are actually uh, replacements uh, just to, to preserve the original thing because we had so yeah. many folks going in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the a lot of the the surrounding we took those, put them in storage, and, and had mock-ups created so that they're they're nice and durable. Gotcha. Um, so, you don't need to worry too much, but yeah, you can I'll either get you coming out. just climb out okay. this way. Or I'll first, then I'll get you coming out. Here and slide out back, basically in reverse of how you got it. All right, let me bend the camera down here, like that. And I'm there, like that. And out we go. All right, and we'll get each. So what is your schedule here. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So, so <laughs> what's your schedule? Oh my, are you, there's EJ coming out. I'm Hello. surprised that actually I've happened. I've got a dash because I've got another group that I need to go um, tour, but I know, Scott, you were interested in seeing the archives at some point. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you mm-hmm. said you had some cool dogs. Yeah, you could yeah. commercial space. Yeah, Commercial Space Flight Federation is actually here today. So. Oh, really? Oh, right. <laughs> so they're doing an archive tour, so we have a bunch of stuff pulled for them. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see what you pulled for them. Okay, just Would the it? Wild, so whatever works. Sure. Um, okay. So their tour is scheduled for. Uh, I think so they're gonna be here about an hour. No. Should be freed up. So. We got you. Okay. okay. You know, I, I don't know whether we'll be able to stream it. Or, or are we able to take the camera in there? Or? Uh, Actually, let me check with her. Okay. I think I'll, I think I'll have to cut off on my Yeah, own. yeah. Because okay. honestly, the, the, there is less concern about viewing the artifacts. Right. More concern about viewing the surrounding security. The surrounding yeah. security stuff? Ah, yeah. Uh-huh. So we could do B-roll, but maybe yeah. not live stream. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Or like we could do yeah, yeah, stuff like up, up close. Up close, set. but yeah. not the whole Amy stuff, the out. wide shot. I'll, I'll check with Nicole. Yeah, it's just okay. part yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we've been to rocket launch pads where we, it's very important yeah. where we point yeah. the cameras. So if yeah. you train us, we could do that. But we'll talk about that. We'll yeah. talk about that. Yeah, it was, it, so we had it's exactly right. When we were uh, uh, prepping the, um, the for the F1, they, they got their <laughs> it's got the cowboy boots on, dude. Cowboy boots. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like, you're fine to film the engines, just, just don't film the surrounding. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, right, yes. These go this way, <laughs> should I just toss them? It, it, yeah. I think it's less concerned about that particular artifact, but if they were in a storage area with other. Not yeah. As, as difficult to <laughs> spell pen. To, right? <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, okay, good deal. Well, I gotta run. Um, Jeff, thank you so much for the time. Yeah, thank you very much. God, chat. Hey, y'all know what to do, chat. Say thank you to Jeff right here. Put some hearts over there. Yeah. It's uh, not the first time we've hung out with you, and yeah. don't think it's going to be the last. So. Um, yeah, so so maybe around noon. Uh, okay. What's the... I could, I could send a Slack message to Scott. I could send an email to you. Like, I don't know, I'm Twitch. Whichever works. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Twitter, that's what I... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... If you just shoot, shoot us an email, that's okay, the easiest yeah, thing okay. to do. Right, just good. send an email with a, with a, what your schedule looks okay. like. So you, you still got your on. yeah, <laughs> your booties on. The shuttle bugs. It's, right. I have a. We're not even done here. Oh no, we're not done. You got yeah. No. Yeah. So Ted, what's your schedule like? How long will you be with us here? Well. Um, what do you want to do? So um, I've, I've got things. a little bit of time, but also... Is that a thing? What, what, what would you like to show us? Going back at Apollo, I'm not sure if we can do... Gotcha. So, so what about City of Everett? Can we do that? So we oh, yeah. 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 Did we go back through there? Flight deck on there? No, yeah. That, oh, okay? no. Oh, no. That one, we got to get the maintenance people to... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So okay. should we go out to uh, go out to the aircraft I would say pavilion? That's all right. We should do that. Okay. So the one thing we have to figure out is this, um, so we can put that somewhere. I mean, I think for now we might just keep going with the with the action cam. We don't yeah, need to switch. Yeah. yeah. We should. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do that, y'all. And again, everybody. Uh, massive thanks to the Museum of Flight. We're out here at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. I'm Das. I'm I'm wearing the camera right now and we're using the uh, the streaming backpack that we use for the virtual field trips we got ej down there scott manley's with us uh ben who's baron who's over getting a little bit of a snack we've got uh, ted who is the pr guru from the museum can i say guru sure if you yeah like. all right cool pr guru from the museum so uh we are all over museum of flight today and we just exited the uh full fuselage trainer for the shuttle i'm actually going to run this way right quick and get it like this but uh, this is the full scale training thing it's not like a model or anything it is actually what uh, the astronauts would train in when they wanted to know where all the switches and buttons and everything when they wanted us to be able to see in the cargo bay checking things like lighting all that sorts of stuff this is the actual trainer that they trained in so it's here in the uh, museum of flight in seattle and it's something that you can come and check out ted i got a I got a question if you don't yeah. mind so you got you got a you got gears right there. Could they change the angle of attack of the, the trainer there? Is that just equipment to hold the thing in place? Or? Yeah. No, it's, uh, this all came with it. Yeah. You know, so this is all the it looks the like you could change the pitch on it. Yeah, yeah, they could. Uh, before they put the fuselage part of it, yeah. uh, this could be tilted up. No way. And the other uh, nose sections, the two other simulators like this, yeah. um, could do that on Obviously, a routine basis. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we've so here's a good question. Actually, we've got somebody that lives locally who asks how they can volunteer with the museum. Is there information oh. on the website or website? <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a section in there volunteers. Yeah. So all gotcha. You need. So if one of the mods, if y'all could grab the uh, if y'all could grab the link to the museum website where there's information on how you can volunteer, that's a great question, Miff. Uh, yeah. We'll see if we can look that up for you. Good you question. All kinds of volunteers. Yeah. I live down the street. I be here every day. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay. I love the fact that they actually have the landing gear compartment. Oh. Bum, 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 bum. Whoa! No, no way. Yeah. For signatures. Right yeah, there. dude. What's it say? It's cru so cruise F cruise FTS one twenty five or one thirty five. The final four. It's that's Chris Ferguson. Uh, what is it? Doug Hurley who's on the commercial crew oh, program. Yeah. 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 Yep. Sandy Mogus and Rex Walheim. <laughs> that's cool. And that's, uh, we did that out of kind of a tradition in aviation. Right. It was common for pilots on a last flight to sand, to sign, usually under the landing gear. That's cool. 
I mean, Chris Ferguson still, he's going to be flying yep. again very he's soon. He's going to be on, on, on Starliner. Star Liner. Yeah, yeah. And then Doug Hurley is uh, one of the test pilots for the Dragon. Yep. If I remember right, yeah. We're racing to the space station. Yeah. Doug needs to get his flag back. <laughs> get his flag back, get nice. His flag back. Let get the flag his flag out back. Let's get it back. <laughs> oh, yes, we got the jab. Nice. <laughs> is this a Vasmir? Yeah, yeah, it is. Wait, really? Yeah. There it is. Dude. Me. Just me. Poor. Oh. Uh, I was going to say, it looks pretty janky. Yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty janky. <laughs> it's like, did a plumber put this stuff together? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say, I criticized like, some of those EM drive pictures of like, being sloppy. This looks... <laughs> <laughs> See people. Oh, All right. We're two guys. So, we, I mean, you're the show of me. Also, Frank Land, something like that. It's counterpart, if you will. Not the brand, no. There's a Soyuz crew module here. You do this, right? Like, just walk backwards. <laughs> Can I have that for my living room? For your living room. I need a copy of that for the living room. Well, I could put you in touch with the guy anywhere. Another one of our volunteers. Really? Just, you know, makes wow. it at home. Somebody asked, wouldn't it be nice if we had a, a big shuttle model? That's, really <laughs> nice. and that's how a lot of things happen here. Yeah? These folks that... Uh, they turn a hobby into a museum craft. God. So, so I figured there was like a, a company or something that makes stuff like no, that. No, you call that it the one company? was all handmade. Wow. <laughs> all of this takes several months to accomplish. It's a pretty, pretty nice model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The detail on the ET up yeah. there. Like, all the vent lines are in the right spots. Right. Yeah. And all the uh, stuff in the access for the actual Mr. Yeah. All the extra stuff so, that people never we see. We didn't have a lot of room up on the flight deck yeah. of the shuttle, but that thing is like a camper van compared to this. <laughs> there is yeah. not a lot of space in there. This could only be this wide because it had to fit on an R7 rocket yeah. designed in the 1950s. Yeah. Yep. So instead of the Apollo was big and wide because it was you know, Saturn V, yep. Saturn I, this... Of course, to get the crew accommodation, they had an extra module that bolted on the front. Yeah, the and they had the service module that came yeah. off the back. But this is what came back, and it is teensy, teensy tiny. Yeah. Like, we were three of us stuck in the back of the Prius with our bags. <laughs> yeah. We joked, but it's, it's about to say, this is worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, shoulder to shoulder in there, shoulder going to, to space. And the other thing is, Ted pointed out, just before landing, those uh, seats, they raise up, right? So when the astronauts land, they get, and they get ah, shock absorbers there. Gotcha. But most of the time, yeah. they 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 have to use the thing longer to reach the control panel. Um, and doesn't this thing also have like retro rockets built into the bottom right yeah. during landing? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah so they lose the, the heat shield. This has all the instructions, and they're in Russian and English. Love this part. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so it jettisons the heat shield, Ted. Yeah. Yeah. Right, jettisons the heat shield, and then just before landing, these are all jet engine or rocket engines that fired. Uh, cushion the landing and say you say it's in the wrong place and you're some Russian farmer or Kazakh farmer actually yeah. you yeah. have the instructions here attention not to stand near this site because potentially rocket engines and radiation sources to trigger the rocket engines can take a key because they would have three of these like hex wrenches around the outside they would be protected during re-entry but once that popped off they would be there and put into hole there you go here, right here. Oh, so it, it's on the front hatch. There's a hole, a hex hole that you crank okay. it open. Yeah, yeah. Open, open the hatch. Open the. It is Help like to get out. It's like the opening <laughs> instructions. It's there like is. IKEA. It yeah. Is. yeah. So which one of these is the retro? So like these three of the retros. I, I, I'm not sure, the, but these three here, because those aren't in the one that I saw. They might have. They can't. They can't be yeah. retros. They so must be something. Blows up at the ground. Yeah, yeah. To, to, to cushion the landing. So, Ted, is this like mud on oh, it? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. There's, mud. there's a bit of Kazakhstan. It's right a little there. bit of Kazakhstan it's here. Cool. Are we in Russia right now? Like, does that technically count as? <laughs> no, that's yeah. Kazakhstan. Yeah, it's Russia. Kazakhstan. Yeah, you're right. It's Kazakhstan. Thank you. And be sure to wave. I like 
that. Yeah, the family can Bye. wave. Hey. Knock on the window. Hey guys. It says, attention, not to stand near this side. Right. So, so um, this is obviously all bladed from yeah, re-entry, look at, right? Look at that. Look at that. Look at yeah. that toast is, you're re-entry beating all the way down. This thing has to take you know, different attitudes to control its descent. And it's, a, wow. it's designed to a blade, but it means it has a chemical reaction, a charring reaction from yeah. the heat, yeah. where it carbonizes and protects everything below. Yeah. Now, so Scott, like the American stuff is more conic in nature. This looks like a kind of a mayonnaise jar right. or something. Like, what, so why is that? Looks why like is it headlamp? Shaming? That's what I. Yeah, 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 yeah. And why? the reason is because they had to be narrow to fit on that R7 okay, rocket. Okay, so they had to stretch so it. So if they did a cone they wouldn't be able to fit many people in. So they kind of chose a, a shape that's halfway between being a sphere, the most efficient yeah. shape, yeah. and uh, something that could actually get some sort of aerodynamic control during yeah. descent. Yeah, yeah. And so you have the uh, little RCS thrusters. This does a rolling low yeah. control re-entry. Yeah. Yeah. So that bump there, the RCS thrusters? That's is for that pitch control. Pitch and control. Then yaw or roll control uh, yep, here. Down here. I saw these. Here. So these that's that's all integrated into the capsule. I mean, yeah. like the, the CS, are, like Apollo doesn't have pitch and, pitch and yaw, does it? It's uh, just yeah, the Apollo yeah. has pitch oh, and yaw. Yeah. So these are peroxide thrusters. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, there's people inside and they didn't want to have the nasty hydrazine yeah. thrusters. Yeah, that makes sense. And the peroxide isn't totally stable. So as you've got this tank sitting on orbit, it's converting slowly to oxygen and water. You know, if you have a tank of peroxide, you'll yep. hear bubbles in it. Yep, and yep. that is the main limitation on how long a Soyuz can remain at the space station, 185 days. Ah. <laughs> so, yeah, if they were using hydrazine, it would be more stable, but, yeah, then they would be... Don't use I mean, I don't, so I don't want to be sitting next to a can of right, hydrazine. So <laughs> let's, let's not do that. Here, right? Oh, okay. You can, can you see it? Yeah, it's that structure in there. So this down here is where the main parachute is, right? But if the main parachute fails, this is where their emergency parachute comes and below the reserve you have the peroxide tanks in there. I mean, yeah, and keep in mind, that, the parachute isn't just like a flat disc. That's a plate that's going that's in a big there to, plate, to yeah. make less room in there. Yeah. yeah. So they've used that as a window in this case, and you, so you can see the hatch from the outside. And then the, the orbital module would be... The yeah, yeah, yeah. Standing. And actually, when you include the orbital module, this had more space right. than the Apollo command module yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was actually in many ways more comfortable, and it had a proper toilet. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a <laughs> so, the Russians proper toilet have had toilets in their spacecraft longer than Americans. <laughs> hey, look, it even has a little gravity. Uh, it does. Yeah. I love the. I love okay, the fact that's cool. Fyodor had a gravity uh, yeah, yeah, check yeah. device. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> look, uh, can y'all see the? It looks like a giraffe, I guess. It is hung in there with fishing lines, so it looks like it's floating. Yeah. You see that? That's really cool. But the panels aren't that good, but uh, they're a decent approximation. So. Das, it's it's actually saying here that this capsule was uh, it's TM it's the TMA fourteen capsule and it carried Kennedy Padelka. Ah. I talked to him at Space Fest. You did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've seen the capsule in one of the, the flew, flew the guy yeah. that flew in this capsule. It didn't the thing didn't go through, but we have the footage. So yeah. I, I was talking to him two weeks ago. <laughs> but how, how is this? all right. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, hey, you know. You know, the Starhopper hopped the other way, just kind of a the other day, kind of a little bit of a subject change. You know, the star hopper hopped and it did its thing. But a lot of people don't know, and this is kind of what I'm segmenting to you. A lot of people don't know that. That's not the first time. Like, neither was Grasshopper uh, with Falcon 9. That wasn't the first time that somebody did that. Come here, check this out, guys. You'll appreciate this. Look at that. That's a piece of DCX. Who knows about that? I'll take Chad out. Who knows about that? Uh, yes, the Delta. The Delta Clipper. Oh. Delta Clipper. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Thanks. this used the uh, RL-10 engines, Indeed. expander cycles, yeah. so they could you know, throttle and control the whole thing. There's a great video of during one of the tests where there's an explosion on the side of the rocket that blows out the surface material and it still lands safely after that. I mean, it was... Weren't RL-10s like designed to land on the moon? That's why they... No, RL-10s were designed to be upper stage engines. I mean, sure, they then developed them for yeah. landing on the moon later. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, the first hydrogen-oxygen engine that was supposedly slated to go to the moon was a, a J2 in one of the early huh. big, yeah, yeah, know, yeah, big yeah. rocket designs. Yeah. But um, the RL-10, they did test it for the Altair as a moon landing engine, ah. and they got that deep throttle way I mean, yeah, that expander cycle, yeah, of course. Have you seen the video of this test where the, <coughs> there's a rocket engine firing and there's ice cores forming yeah, yeah. on the thing? It's one of the most beautiful, That's so hypnotic cool. pieces of footage. That's yeah. 
But anyway, that ended up. It was designed and built by uh, Bert Rutan, uh, yep. the, the, the scale composite built the exterior. And it flew around for a bit, a bunch of test flights, and then fell over and caught fire. Or caught fire and fell over. It had a very terrible. Like into the swamp, right? I, like a landing <laughs> leg didn't <laughs> come out. The <laughs> yeah, the landing leg didn't deploy, Something and it's like, like three that, legs. Uh, and the radio chatter's like, we're missing a leg, <laughs> and the thing still touches down, and then it timbers over, like, yeah. oh, it's heartbreaking. Oh, you don't, All right. You don't know how but it was a subscale version of what they wanted to do. Cool. So that would have been pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Scott, were there any alternative landing sites for Soyuz? Silent Starshide is going to explode if I don't ask you. Um, that's a good question. They have certainly been alternate events where... <laughs> They had to land elsewhere because of emergencies. By the way, yep. Ed Lu's suit, you know, you know him, Asteroid Day Ed Lu. Uh, we got him playing Kerbal very yeah. early on. One of the, the original astronaut He was the Kerbal, original right? astronaut playing yes. Kerbal, yes. So, um, yeah, it's always been Kazakhstan because they need a big flat area yep. where, and there's not that much, and it has to be pretty close to, they do it close to Baikonur, so that's their plan. Um, no, to think about it, they have had cases where they. Uh, yeah, so they definitely were cases where they landed. Yeah. Look at that! I did this on purpose to get you in the shot. Step oh, back shit. up there. Scott for scale. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get down on my knees for my health. Like I wanted to get you in the shot with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mock ups. RS twenty five engines, right? Yeah. You want to know how mock up y they are, right? Check this out. <laughs> Okay. Right here. <laughs> Wait, oh, yeah, Paul is diary. That's how mock up they are. Minus Paul is diary. Let's show that to. Yeah, that's all. First, we seem safe, but after after about two minutes and my guts are just vibrating like crazy. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm thinking, that. you know, this is kind of dangerous. It's probably right a bad here. idea. <laughs> you know, shouldn't be near I think this. they've got the right idea. They've got. They invited 200 people out to watch this. <laughs> yeah, we are. He's talking about when he saw an RS-25 engine test. Or oh, show, show wow. Test. They let Dennis you, Dennis Dennis. Let you stand right up next to it. The Rainmaker. And you're just like, <laughs> uh, rockets. Here, let's, let's yeah. see if we can go. Were these, uh, Ted, were the engines here or were those a part of the museum exhibit? Like, these were a part of the... No, it was... It was, was it? Was uh, Kennedy. Really? Or, or Johnson, rather. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, so wow. This is, of course, the orbital maneuvering. Or else, uh, well, AJ-10. Jeff was telling me that this is a this is a prototype TRW motor. That's what that's what he was saying. Are you look, trying to look at the for the injector? Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly. I'm looking that at. I'm trying, no, that's a, it's, it's not a, a pencil plate. Limit. It's yeah. a plate injector. Yeah, just a regular plate. It's not a pencil injector. TRW was known for making those pencil injectors on the on the LMD. Yeah. <laughs> That's, this is massive, I mean, I'm even sure look at the it's... look at the Ohms engine. The yeah. Ohms engine is huge. That's like, that is the Ohms engine from the shuttle. Yeah. Uh, I can't see it up there. Let me get over this way. Yeah. So the bell, the smaller bell up there, past the RCS ports, right? Past the RCS thruster, underneath the tail. Uh, those are the big RS25s. That is the uh, engine, and that's what this is right here. Oh. Well, we want to make sure the is good, but we also also get a sweet yeah. picture of the shuttle. Shuttle yeah. OMS. Yeah. There you go. Check an explainer out. that shows yeah. where it is. This is an early research model developed by TRW. So this isn't an AJ-10. This is whatever their, you know, entry into the contract was for. But I mean, oh, there. Okay. I mean, but look, this is so. This is a hydraulic engine. You use monomethyl hydrazine and, and dinitrogen tetroxide. You want to like that's the engine. That's it. That's all of it right there. It's just two pumps and two injectors. That's it. It's about as simple as you can get. And all you got to do is just pressure feed those in there. And once they touch each other, you get a nice big explodey coming out the back. That, I mean, but that's it. That's how simple it is. That's why yeah. most spacecraft nowadays just still use some form of hypergolic propellants. I mean, we can go down the list. Dragon uses it. Cygnus uses it. Soyuz has a hypergolic system in the service module, not in the, not in the command module, like what, what Scott was saying. The shuttle used it. Buran used it. Everybody. Like, that's the right way to do it because these things last. The, 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 the hypergolic fuels can stay stable for very long periods of time. You just keep it in a spacecraft. Most satellites use... use either solar electric propulsion nowadays or hydrazine just to kind of stay there. And that's actually what, like, like uh, the systems on board the Soyuz denotes its service life. The satellite can last 10 to 15 years because you have to keep it in place. You have to keep it in its slot, like a satellite that would be out at geostationary. I'm pointing over there, like geostationary is over there or something. <laughs> it's 23,000 miles that way. <laughs> There's a Hubble above us, too. No? Oh, yeah. 
there's that. Are we continuing to yeah, uh, let's, migrate? Let's keep going. I think Scott is going to live in that engine bell. Like. <laughs> Scott's looking at the engine bell. He's going to start singing. He's going to start singing, yeah. Police, right? Yeah. <laughs> Giant steps up. You were clear, right? You explained it inside the F1. Yep. Yes. 